how to create fire. In most of the cases, uh, creating fire is not going to be a hard task because uh, at this moment, most of the time, you should actually go for Photoshop, especially in one point perspective. I would always go for Photoshop because, uh, well, it's going to give you the best uh, control over your um, your fire, especially in those bio, bio uh, fireplaces where you just paste it in and you add in two layers of it. It's very hard to achieve a photorealistic fire when it comes to uh, rendering. So there are two ways to do it. Mm. Uh, so um, there's a video uh, VDB file which is pretty much going to be a cluster of clouds and uh, it's one of those files that we didn't really talk about because this is a really 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 advanced knowledge and it requires uh, fire simulation in most uh, in more advanced programs so uh, I'm just showing you the most efficient uh, not most efficient, most realistic way to create fire. That's uh, Phoenix FD. You can download the demo from uh, from their own uh, from their site. It's going to work for 45 days. And there's a lot of uh, fire tutorials online. And this is going to be the best and uh, most realistic uh, way of create uh, creating fire. But let's actually skip this because this is just. Uh, more of um, let's say uh, more of something interesting but not exactly something I would um, expect you to follow because as I said simulating fire is really really complicated uh, but if you uh, get your hands on one of those uh, VDB files um, I can show you uh, the ropes so um, it's going to be well quite interesting in Corona uh, because it's it actually gives those nice effects as you can see and um, actually it's not that hard to create but it requires totally different knowledge that you have so far uh, so the easiest way to create fire is actually to first find any kind of uh, fire texture so um, this kind of fire texture is actually going to be really bad. Also, don't pick any kind of this uh, shots. Well, maybe this dragon breath is quite okay, but it's not something we're looking for. You should always go for shots like this where you can see all of those uh, flames. Um, ju just sh something like this. Uh, this is also quite okay, but it's artificial on this uh, from the very beginning, so I wouldn't use this. Okay, I like this one, so I'm going to pretty much uh, use it right now. Um, let me just reset this uh, shot. Um, Shalene, um, I used your scene in one of the videos I created for you as a disclaimer uh, because you were blessed with one of the Corona camera bags. And as you can see, guys, uh, one of the things that uh, I would I need to tell you about Corona camera is that sometimes when using uh, your regular perspective match, you're going to have this problem that Charlene had. It's a total bummer and unfortunately there's a no fix for this so quick uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what happens when you try to move your camera just a bit as I'm not even sure if you can see the sonic speed speed of uh, this camera uh, anyway um, this is one of the bugs that really really is annoying because when you try to look around it pretty much allows you to but as soon as you try to move around well, this happens, and uh, if you will have, you may have this bug in your uh, scene. So uh, if you do, um, you should probably start over uh, in some uh, at some point when it comes to uh, your uh, perspective match. Uh, I will give you the video. Uh, you you already have it uh, in your. Um, 
we already uploaded it not se uh, didn't send it yet because well the encryption uh, took a little bit longer than i anticipated and i misspoke last time but the videos are ready uh, so anyway i'm just going to reset this scene to actually show you how i would approach uh, fireplace creation and especially the fire uh, so let's quickly model out some fireplace which is going to be uh where more or less uh, realistic so um this is good enough and well first of all you will have to uh, assume a lot of stuff in your fireplace so when it comes to uh this situation well uh, let's say that I'm going to add a little bit of logs in here. So this is too big. Let's scale it down. So it's just going to be more realistic uh, when I add the fire. Of course, uh, I'm not going to create anything realistic, but you get the point. So uh, anyway, let's see this uh, again. So uh, let's say that those are my uh, wood logs and I'm just going to use those. So um, one thing that you may want to add before you actually add fire to your uh, scene is uh, some kind of dust. So uh, I usually go for my uh, usual, just regular plane, add a little bit of uh, segments to it, and then I try to use two, uh, four by four or any other modifier that will allow me to do exactly what I'm going to do in a second. So go for four by four, uh, and again, just make sure that you have a little bit of that dust around here. You can use um, the same method that we already discussed during our webinar about terrain creation. So uh, just make a little bit of dust. It uh, doesn't matter uh, how much you do it, just add a little bit of it. So it's just going to look a little bit better when you look at this fireplace from far away. So um, the fire itself should be pretty much created the same method as you would approach your uh, background because this is usually going to be uh, some kind of picture and that's why you want to create one dimen two dimensional plane. Uh, doesn't really matter how deep uh, you're going to add your fire uh, texture. So uh, let's just add any texture at all. So we've got this texture. So let me just save it, save image as, and let's name it fire. And okay, it's in my downloads, so I'm uh, able to find it in seconds. Um, okay, so how I would approach it, I would actually go for Corona light or Corona material. In this case, I'm going for an easier approach. So it's going to be Corona light, Corona and Corona bitmap. In this case, I know that I need to go to my downloads folder and find the fire uh, that I just downloaded. So now it's here. Um, so pretty much this is the approach, but we're not actually finished yet. So adding the Corona correction, uh, it's going to allow me to create this opacity map. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this as an input map. And again, you can see that now we've got pretty much the situation where uh, our fire is now changed to uh, some kind of block. So in most of the cases, you want to go for a little bit of nuclear power. Uh, so to make it to make sure that it looks at least a bit uh, flamey. And okay, so this looks okay for me. Of course, when using our opacity map, um, we're going to go back and forth with gamma. Um, in this case, it actually looks good, but most of the cases will require you going um, back and forth with contrast. So you can change uh, the settings a little bit. So you're going to get a little bit different effects. In this case, uh, adding a little bit of contrast helped me to um, get more of that flame around here. Of course, gamma is also going to be helpful in this case but just don't go overboard because you're going to get this uh, shadow effect around here and you really, really don't want it. Uh, so again, let's go back. And what I'm going to do now is close those two windows, add some kind of material to my uh, pseudo fireplace. 
uh, let's say it's going to be just dark black uh, material. So it's uh, one of those metallics. So let's add a little bit of it. And again, glossiness, let's uh, take our diffuse color down almost to zero. And well, it now looks more metallic, so it's okay. Um, yeah, the inside really don't want it to be uh, this color at this moment because it's just going to blue the effect. Okay, um, we're ready. So uh, the main method now is to create this pl uh, planner light. So let me just start my interactive render. And you can see that this instantly looks quite okay. It's not um, perfectly fine, so I'm just going to play a little bit with my video frame buffer settings and bloom and glare is actually something that you must have for your fire, especially the bloom, because it's going to give this fire a little bit of warmth. Um, of course, light mix is going to be your, uh, your friend uh, at this situation. And well, uh, let, let me reduce this uh, fire um, just a little bit so it's not going to be that strong so we can actually read some of those colors and okay it looks better now so i need to add some kind of environment uh, white color is not going to be suitable for me so i'm just going to go for gray so everything looks more or less good um, highlight compression is going to help you in this case so we're now getting even more detail out of this uh, fire as you can see it actually looks like fire now but uh, where's the trick the trick is to actually copy it at least three times so let me just move it in uh, put it on my uh, logs so you can already see that it pretty much uh, is going to fit itself inside of course now I need to rotate those planes so they look more random. Uh, scaling it up and down is also going to add a little bit of effect. And what I also like to do is add a little bit of reflection inside. As you can see, now this creates a little bit of that effect. And of course, I used only one texture. So in this case, what I'm going to do is um, make sure that I make a mirror out of it without any copy, no clones, uh, just a mirror. Now I can rotate it even further, so it's going to look more random. And as you can see, we're almost getting this effect. So it's never going to be exactly perfect when using only one texture that you copy and you actually don't even scale it, but you get the main idea, right? So uh, when you actually add the flames like I did, you just need to play around with the levels of it and make sure that you add one more light inside. Uh, sometimes this uh, kind of flame will be enough and as you can see now, this uh, pseudo dust is actually giving my fire a little bit more uh, power. So it looks a little bit better and it actually looks a little bit more realistic. I always add at least one layer of uh, fire uh, in Photoshop on top of my fireplace because, well, it's uh, just the way to uh, uh, how you go about it, but it's not going to be necessary in most of the cases. Of course, you can still play around with the exposure or a contrast of your fire, but at this point, it's just a back and forth to make it more and more realistic. Uh, make sure that you properly scale your fire and pick the proper texture for your fire because without it it's going to look really weird. Uh, it's still going to require a little bit extra work around here so one of, uh, one of the tricks that you can also use for your advantage is adding uh, one cylindrical object into your scene. So uh, deleting the cap and the bottom is going to allow you to actually play a little bit extra with the fire. So I'm just adding the same texture. And now, as you can see, this flame is actually going around this object. Uh, but not, that's not exactly what I want because I want this to actually go the other way. So I'm just going to copy this material, rotate this map by 90 degrees, 
And when I did that, I can now add it in. And you can see that now this fire is actually um, surrounding this log. So my next step is going to be align. I'm going to click on align, pick the proper object inside my scene and select both axes and position to make sure that my flames are actually around this log. So let me just scale it down. And now it looks pretty much uh, what I would expect in this situation, but still it's not going to be perfect. It's just going to help you get some of the realism. It's just going to take you a lot of back and forth to make it look even better. And you cannot just add a uh, regular uh, logs as you would with uh, well any kind of fire because it's going to look uh, quite weird so instead you should add a little bit of uh, burn the log so it's going to look even better